Mm. There's a hole right there. Why would you not use it? Because it goes into my kitchen! I know, which makes it hilarious. Freaking murder people. <laughs> it's like, get mm. out of my house. I'm done. I'm done with all y'all. Greetings, everyone. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James. With me, as always, Caleb. Good morning, everybody. Hey, how's it going? And our very special guest today is Jonathan Ness. Hello. He also known as the Amazing J-Man. The Amazing J-Man, or just J-Man, as we've been calling him all week, uh, basically. Yeah. And J-Man is, was, is uh, our good friend from Minnesota, who's in town for the week, and he spent a while down with uh, our friend Osmo, and now he's up here to record the podcast on his last day here. Yep. Before so we, he heads off to college. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So yeah. we'll get into that in a minute. Um, J-Man is a prolific toy photographer on Instagram. You can find him at the Amazing J-Man. And uh, he does phenomenal work with Halo. Uh, le- do you do any Lego anymore? I That's where I started, but not so much anymore, no. Okay, so um, he does some Lego, but he does, you do mostly Star Wars, but some Halo, some... Uh, what is the what is the uh, World War II ones? Acid Rain and Joy Toy historical figures a lot, but I, I try and separate them from their toy line. I'm trying to do... I do a lot of custom figures, too, to do a lot of my own original ideas and characters okay and because i don't want to be just a star wars account i don't want to be just a sci-fi account i want to do a little of everything my current tagline that i'm going with is um interdimensional journalism meaning i i shoot in different galaxies different dimensions and that basically means that i'm not tied down to anything that's an interesting character so you're the amazing j-man who goes around to different, you're you're basically the doctor That's from true. Doctor Who. Yeah. <gasps> wow. Mm. So you can check it. You're mostly on Instagram for yeah. for your toy photography. Do you did you do Flickr? I I started on Flickr. That's where my Lego work is. Uh, so if you're interested in, is it still the Amazing Jamin? No, my Flickr is Praetorian we, Guard. Say again. Praetorian Guard. Okay. So if you, I don't know. Do you want people checking that out or not really? <laughs> My photography on there is not very good, but if you so want to... So go leave mean comments on <laughs> Praetorian Guard. Yeah, bully my 14-year-old self. <laughs> <laughs> He'll love it. <laughs> He'll love it. Um, but that, So then you recently... Um, we can get back to the more to- toy photography later. Um, but, and then you started a podcast last year or two years ago? Last November, and I've put about, out about 13 episodes now. Okay. And what's that called? J-Man's Cantina. And he actually interviewed us on it a while ago. We had such fun and terrible things. Go listen to that. Episode, what, 10? 9? Yes, you're episode 10. So we're episode 10, behind the mic of Morning Eggnog with Caleb and James. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun time. I've never used Anchor until then. So now we have you here in person, so we can make fun of you and bully you. <laughs> <laughs> Revenge is swerved. Hey, live no one can swerved? bully me more than- Swerved live. No one can bully me more than Anchor already does. True. <laughs> They're like, hey, you're going to do an ad next? Hey, you're going to do an ad? And we're like, ha, we don't get paid. Um, the other thing is, you're going to college. Where are you going to college? I am... Because you went to college once. Did you... You got an associates? Yeah, I got an associates at Anoka Ramsey Community College. Now I'm going to uh, Minnesota State University of Moorhead. Okay. Which and... is right on the border of North Dakota. Okay. And Minnesota, so it'll be out in the country, a lot more quiet than living close to the Twin Cities, a lot more up my alley. There we go. And what are you going for? I'm not sure yet. I've been considering broadcasting, but I am also looking into doing law. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got. I gave... can see you in a in a tan suit and trying to defend well, some ga- is... some woman who cheated on her husband. You say that. <laughs> I you don't know. That... I think I could see him on the other side of the yeah, table definitely. attacking. There we go. That too. <laughs> you both lawyer. imagine me like this greedy Saul Goodman character. That'd from be Better per- Call Oh Saul. my gosh, you're right though. I could see it. <laughs> but like my whole motto is God gave me a voice to that speaks out and I want to use it for good. Exactly. Not so, for money. So you go against the woman who cheated on a man trying to get alimony. Would that be yeah. the defendant? Yeah. Anyways, well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. C- Caleb's one-liner. So that would be a defendant. Well, it depends. I mean... Dead silence. If I do get a bad uh, case, you know, let's say I get corrupted, maybe I just donate the money to charity or... There we go. And then that totally appeases, appeases the gods? Uh, appeases. Uh, cleanses, cleanses, uh, 
whatever, a word. Here's the blood money. Have it. Something <laughs> like that. Anyways, so let's let's get on your uh, <laughs> on your trip here. Um, you had you had a fun flight to from uh, Min- where did you left from Minnesota and <laughs> came to Ohio, yeah. and you said you have a very fun flight. Uh, tell us about that story. So, it's Ohio isn't very far from Minnesota, so it was expected to be like a hour and a half, ninety minute flight, give or take. And first, it started up. I ended up being about twenty minutes late by the time it ended. 20 to 30. I didn't really count. I was just suffering. So basically what happened is I found out the hard way that Delta will wait. (laughs) (laughs) John Mulaney has a wonderful uh, bit about Delta and uh, it's great. Continue. They'll wait. Oh gosh. If you are coming in on a connecting flight, they will wait for you for your flight, which is funny because I was talking to God about that the night before. I'm like, so wait, if I came in on a flight and it's scheduled for after, would they wait? Now I know, but it gets worse. We're waiting for five people to show up to, from <laughs> MSP to <laughs> Fort Wayne. And four of them arrive, or okay. three of them, pardon me, and the last two show up. And they go up to the lady behind me and they say, you're in our spot. She gets up, and I realize she's supposed to be sitting next to me. Oh, no. She is about 300 pounds <laughs> heavier than me. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, 300 pounds heavier than you? Yeah. Oh, no. Ooh. You weigh at least 500 pounds, so. <laughs> Thanks, James. One 700-pound lady. <laughs> <laughs> 700. Thanks, Caleb. <laughs> Yeah, anyways. Uh, continue. <clears throat> and she, I move because, you know, I don't want any problems. I'm, You're I, being a very nice, compliant passenger on a plane. You just want to get from point A to point B. Yeah, and she sits down. I sit down, and her darn elbow <laughs> takes up half of my seat. The entire time, I can feel You're her body like heat <laughs> on my oh, arm. Oh, oh gross. Oh, and no. then, and then, she starts digging her feet into my leg room. Uh, like, people say mansplaining's bad, but this is, like, a billion times worse. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Manspreading, and you're like, hey, ma'am, ma'am, get your, you, she took off her shoes, too? Oh, gosh. Ma'am, can you move your flaps, please? <laughs> 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 ma'am. <laughs> well, that sounds like a fun time. Well, it, the worst part <laughs> was- We took off. Pull on your flaps. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part <laughs> is we land- after they delayed us in the air too. So now it's a 30 minute delay (sighs) and she sits up and she had enough room at the start of the flight. She basically just sucks in her gut. If you've ever seen um, alien with the chest burster, imagine that, but backwards it was. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well that, uh, Uh, I've only been flying once and I was, I was, graciously allowed to sit in the uh by the wind no i got to sit by the window but i was with a bunch of other people oh okay who are uh my size and so it was fine and a bunch of my friends although i did yeah that was fun riding on a train is fun if it's early in the morning uh but if you get on a uh later train you have to you have to sit with somebody you have somebody something in your eye i know it's a bug is it in this one yeah where is it it's like right there. There, it's now on your lid. Okay, that was driving me absolutely it's on your nuts. nose now. Yeah, it flew in my eye. We were walking in the woods and it flew in my eye. So and it's been in there for It's been in there for a couple hours. Oh, that's fun. It just it just moved it finally moved my the, in, the inside of my eye. I'm really confirmed happy that. James <laughs> is now possessed. Pretty much. I oh. I didn't like it at all. Uh, no, I was we were walking, I like looked up and I saw I watched it go in my eye for a second. I was like, oh, 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 oh gosh. And then it's I like, went over to Sam, I was like I have some in my eye? He's like, no, I don't see anything. I was like, okay. This, this is now my home. Me. <laughs> that was uh, the bug. And not then, not then, Sam. <laughs> then, I think it was Sam, too. He kind of does that voice as much either, as I love was it Sam. You were Sam who said, and then tomorrow morning, spiders are just going to spill out of my eye. Oh, that was, was Sam. Like, I don't like that. <laughs> you will now go away, Anyways, Sam. Much better. Now I can see. Um, you know, I find I've it only, funny that, that we're bullying Sam. Because oh, yeah. he's not even here. 
Well, a key point of my podcast is I bully Sam in every episode. Well, yeah, you have to bully Sam. Well, even with people who don't know Sam. <laughs> I, well, nobody, it, nobody watching knows Sam, so it's great. Well, I, I interviewed... <laughs> <laughs> you think he watches this? Let's be real. <laughs> I interviewed Ian Moran, the drummer for the Christian Metal Court. Uh, oh, my God. And you bullied MD. Sam. I made a jab at Sam because he doesn't listen to Christian metal like oh I gosh, do. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I've only been on one. So that was my... Have you been... You've flown like twice, three times? Uh, I've flown multiple, multiple times. I don't... Oh, five, right, right, right. Because you go five, to Five, six, go to seven Kansas times. I forgot you went, you went to Kansas. Yeah, actually, I went to Kansas three Recently. weeks ago and I, I flew uh, north... Um, not northwest. I went with Spirit. And the plane I'm was sorry. actually half empty. So not only did I get my own row, I actually got an exit. So I got more oh leg room. So I gosh. had uh, all this leg room and like, absolutely like nobody in my row. Class. This it was, was amazing. And granted, the plane was put together with duct tape because it's spirit. Actually, the planes are <laughs> one really of the, nice the newest ones. And the newest I, fleet. Not, the, they have the newest fleets in America. Spir- what am I thinking of? I what's, a, what's the one out of Toledo? Uh, it's Northwest. really cheap. No, it is Spirit. Is it Spirit Airlines? Isn't uh, it really cheap? I no, Spirit United. is known for being pretty is bad. Is it United? Yeah, uh, I think it's United. Spirit is is really tight. There's another one. I can't remember what it is, yeah. but it was the one we flew out. It was a ninety dollar plane ride. Yeah, uh, actually, my ticket was forty two dollars to fly to Kansas, and that was well, it. okay then. And that's why I like Spirit. Yeah, it's dirt cheap. Yeah, you have to squeeze in with people, but. This time you didn't, so it was wonderful. Yeah, when we had, when we went to Florida, that was kind of a miserable trip. Ugh. Other than that, yeah. well, I mean, you had to go to Florida, so <laughs> exactly, and it was I think a hundred and twenty dollars round trip for my wife and I. That's not bad at all. So one hundred and twenty bucks, it's solid. cheaper than gas. Yeah, it's much cheaper than <laughs> gas. All right, so Jamin, how I we've probably gone over this, but um, I guess you said you started with Lego photography. How did you get into f- photographing inanimate objects? Well, it all started when I was seven years old. I would I made these massive scenes take up entire rooms in my house, and my parents didn't appreciate that, well, no. obviously. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. They're like so. we need to go to bed. It's midnight. But mom, you can't get into bed. This is where the mountains Stepping are. Stepping on a Legos. <laughs> oh, it's worse because these are four-inch figures. So they're with bayonets. guns and swords. Well, their bayonets are like a nail. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just use nails. Yeah, that's true. It adds to the realism. <laughs> but um, I started. And this is my mom's blood. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> so I started using disposable cameras, and I would just it, they were old point and shoots, and I'd develop them at Target. Terrible quality. You can see well, my yeah, mom in the background well, with some yeah. of the pics. You're like, this is a historic battle scene with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the god of thunder. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So I, I did that for a few years, and I, I kind of stopped when middle school hit for, let's say, two, three years. And I came back when I started Flickr using my iPad iPad 2, actually. And you're using it to take photos of action figures? Well, uh, for Lego. You were using an iPad 2 to take pictures? Yeah. That's so awesome. So you're the guy holding up the book? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to get epic shots, but you're like eight feet off the ground because you can't to quite get, get it angle. close. So then uh, what, what was your first? So you went from an iPad 2 to what? Did you get a DSLR? Yeah. Then? Well, not a DSLR. I got a Canon Power Shot. Heck I, yeah. It was awful. What do you mean it was awful? It's a Canon Power Shot compared to an iPad 2. Right, but it wasn't a DSLR. It was another point and shoot. So for a while, I just kept using my iPad. Yeah. And then I got a iPhone 6. I started Ooh. using that for a while. You're like every toy photographer now. Ugh. They use their <laughs> phones because they're so good. You know the iPhone 12s? Yeah, no. Anyways... They're so much better than everything else. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Sarcasm. Anyways, so I I took a break from that. Like I would do it intermittently, but I was yeah. you know, I was fourteen and deep and depressed. Yeah. So As we were as you do. Yeah, so I 
what are you doing, Caleb? Like, Caleb likes my my Jerry ring <laughs> the light. I, I so James has a light uh, duct taped <laughs> to the wall. No, I, not even to the wall. It's duct taped in between two studs. Yeah, it's not even duct. It's not even being held there. It's just gravity just holding it there. I've been sitting here for twenty minutes and I just noticed that, and I'm just kind of <laughs> like, you you'll be able to see the footage when I'm like. But okay. it's really bright. It looks really nice. And here we are. And continuing on. So, anyways, Thank you, went, you, Caleb. So you went from your power shot, tied, and then you were 14 and deep. Yeah, so I, I used my phone for a while, and then in 2018, yeah, 18. You got serious. I got a Sony A6000. Oh, that's what we're filming on right now. I got mine for $25. I got mine for two fifty, which is still good. That's a phenomenal That's a price, good, actually. Yeah. In twenty eighteen, those were even more popular. But I, was the eight was the eight was the sixty five hundred out yet? Yeah. Oh yeah, the sixty five hundred was out. The seven is or whatever it is was out. But still, I don't think you can get an a an a six thousand for under three hundred right now easily. Yeah. Anyway, so you got so you got that. Yeah. And you upgraded, and you finally are in the big leagues now. Well, it's more than that too, because I I was kind of burnt out. By not by doing toy photography, but I don't know if you've ever been frustrated with technological limitations. Obviously, all the time. Yeah. So I I got tired of using the kit lens, and yep. I got into vintage lenses, mm. which I need an adapter, and I was able to mount a lens that would have been used in the Vietnam War. That's really cool. It's a Canon FL fifty five millimeter macro. Wow. And it's, I use it for everything. I have a few more that I use, but typically it's my 50. Cool. Yeah. I love using macro lenses. Uh, when we did wedding photography, it was one of my favorite ones to use because you could get on like uh, rings and flowers and the shots were just- adds a really nice bulk around all of it and it's just really crisp and clear and you yeah. can see the different lines and ridges and the diamonds. Exactly. Then when you take a flashlight and you'd go over top of it, and it would sparkle. Ooh. Ooh. As in video videography, not photography. Well, true. So, and then you're still using that till this day. Yeah. And you're still what? Is, how many followers do you have in your account now? Four thousand one hundred and fifty, somewhere around there. That's exciting. I just hit four K like a month ago, That's so awesome. I'm still having that ecstasy high from that. There we go. And you make eight thousand dollars a month. That's correct. From, the, from, from Instagram? I think I've made $2 off my podcast Heck if I yeah. sign up for their payment plan. So I'm coming out at $0. Sick. <laughs> so, well, that's, that is uh, quite an achievement. I mean, I, I wish I would have stayed. Technically, I did do toy photography about 11 years ago. Um, I did Lego Stop Animation. It was, it was just something fun to do. And Caleb and I actually made a music video for a contest on a radio show and won five T-shirts. Yes. Really? Yeah. That's we, awesome. Family Force, Family Force Five. Wobble, and they actually posted it, and it's our most it's our most watched video. And I I cannot find the the password to that account, and I can't get in there anymore. <laughs> and to uh, to retrieve it, I have to use my parents' landline, which which doesn't work. Yeah. Anyways, so that uh, so I did do toy photography, and I do enjoy doing uh, miniatures and things like that. But I don't I don't have time. I don't make time to do it anymore. Um. But so I'm glad you've kept your passion on doing that. Thank you. And uh, why did you want to start a podcast? Everybody wants to start a podcast. I just want to know, like, what, what, how, why did you jump off the deep end and then actually post semi consistently? Well, it's funny because you were actually a part of why I started it. We okay. were about a year ago, you and I were playing Siege and we were talking normally, insulting the 14 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> and this old drunk dad gets on and he's like, stop talking. I hate your voice. And I, I think I freaked out at him. I don't remember. I don't remember either. I don't even remember this conversation. But uh, he freaked out and he started That's hilarious. digging at me more and more. And That's normally how drunk dads uh, are. Oh. That's normally how Rainbow Six Siege is. At least you'll get one game where you'll hop in and people will be like, I'll say something. They'll be like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. And then they'll shoot you and then, then your teammates shoot them and then it's a whole thing. And then they leave and then I report them for grieving. Oh, it's horrible. But it's online gaming. It's great. I, I thought to myself, you know what? Screw him. I'm going to make everyone hear my voice and I'm starting a podcast. <laughs> there we go. So you started your podcast out of spite. Yeah. Not even for fun. 
I hate doing this. Well, I had been doing podcasts for my college about around that same time for the uh, Campus I, a student-based okay. news group that I worked for briefly. Not paid. It was a class, but it was still work. Yeah. So I, I had the experience, and I wanted to do it, and I wanted to prove that guy wrong. And look at me now. You have at least six listeners consistently. Yeah. I actually don't know your numbers. And no, and numbers don't matter. I have about 10. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, dude. So, all right. So then let's go to, let's go to college. So you went to, and you got your associates for, you said journalism? Yeah. And why, did you, why didn't you get your bachelor's in that? <laughs> I, I learned very quickly that journalism and the news in general are a cesspool of corruption. <gasps> Caleb. Yes. Did you hear what he just said? He says, no, I'm, he's, I'm texting work right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he said, he said new, news sources and journalism are cesspool. Yes. <laughs> and Anyways. I should say that I did like my team on the campus. I, they oh, weren't yeah. why. I just, you learn ethics, and then you see like CNN not citing their sources or stuff like that, and it's really bad. It may not seem like a lot, but when you can't go upstream on a major article, yeah. then that's a problem. Have you ever um, watched Nightcrawler? I have not, no. It's an excellent uh, movie about a... It's, it's a I think it's an interesting movie about the news media. It's about a guy, he's basically a ambulance chaser and videos the people who are hurt and bleeding and dying. And uh, it just shows a corruption of a person. It's a really interesting movie. Is it a documentary? No, it's a it's a movie with Jim Jim. Jim what's his name? Chris. What's his name? Gyllenhaal. Ryan Gyllenhaal. Is it Ryan Gyllenhaal? I don't know. It's, it's a pretty good movie. Nightcrawler. Anyways, so you didn't you found out you didn't really want to do that? Yeah, and I was like, you know, I I have a voice. I've kind of established that I'm good at talking to people. That I'm social enough to want to do something. But I'm like, you know, God gave me this gift. I can do it better. Yeah, and I I'm thinking law or broadcasting would be the way to go, but even then I'm still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're only 22, and so you don't really yeah. have to figure anything out for another I don't know 20 years, <laughs> or until you have more things. Well, when do I die? 60, something like that. Yeah. So you have about 30 years, and then then you're almost dead. So the, and then the 10 good years. <laughs> yeah. Get to I went, the end. Or until the debt is too high. There and you're we like, go. Dang it. Now I got to get a real job. <laughs> I, went, I went to a community college and they walked us around and there was a guy showing us like stuff that was going on. And he said, yeah. He said, when I was in school, I changed majors six times. I'm like, all I was thinking is how much debt are you in currently, Mr. 45-year-old presentation person? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Six times. He's like, yeah, you can come in for something and then think, change your mind. He's like, you can just do whatever you want with college. I'm like, all you're doing is telling me you need to spend money here. Pretty much. But that's, it's good that you have two ideas at least instead of just going to college for no reason. And, you know, I'm, I know I said I'm still not sure, but like... I know the area I want to work in. Yeah. I, I'm an introvert, but I like doing artsy, creative things. So I would preferably like to be in a field where I can do something not entertainment-based, but something both meaningful and, um, well, if I go into law, I want to argue. But, you know, something yeah. that's engaging to me. And there are a lot more flaws in journalism than just corruption. Um, the writing in APA style is a giant thorn in my side whenever I try. Explain whatever that is. APA style. It is writing. What does with, APA stand for? I don't remember. Okay, no, I just wondered if you knew. Um, it is the main style that journalists are supposed to use, and most of them don't because they're a bunch of corrupt hacks. Mm -hmm. But it <laughs> basically you try and present things factually, ethically, and unmanipulated. Okay, but and non bias obviously. Right, but... You, Unmanipulated. You know, all of that is... People don't do that. Some people don't. The bigger, the bigger corporate... So I heard two guys, two comedians talk about this, and it was really fascinating. It was at least... They were older guys, and they were talking about how the media has changed in the last... I don't know, I think he said 40 or 50 years. More, maybe more, I guess it's 2020, so maybe 70 or 80 years. He was talking about how, like, during World War II, it was like... Was it Walter Cronkite? Cronkite? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Who he? It was basically C-SPAN. It was him. It was him, the personality, mm -hmm. telling the news. And then supposedly, I don't 
this is just hearsay. A apparently Fox started getting personalities and it started skewing a little differently, and they, their numbers started going way up. And so CNN, who was being very factual and being very nice and telling the truth, noticed that we need to get some personalities and we need to get people in here so that we can spike our numbers. So then that's when the the basically who can get the most clicks or views or whatever started was back whenever I don't know when he said it was, but he said it's been relatively recently in the last like. 40 or 50 years as when he that's when he started changing to BBC from a different country to find out what's going on in America because BBC is still very this is the news this is what's going on this is a major thing that happened in America recently and it's so it's fascinating to see how corruption slowly gains momentum over time well there's more than that too because there's a very good documentary I saw called Shadow of Liberty yeah. I think I might have the name wrong. Um you'll have to look it up, but it basically talks about the start, rise and fall of journalism. Okay. And they attribute a lot of the fall to I believe it was Bill Clinton passed a law that allowed news groups to be able to profit off the news oh, through ads. Oh, that makes sense because yeah. yeah, that yeah, news really shouldn't have ads. No, and they do. Like, if you watch Fox, which I I typically don't, but you always see, like, the super emotionally manipulative ads. CNN does it, too. And it's... Look, I'm falling and I can't get up. (laughs) Yeah. They're all old people ads because old people are the only ones who watch. Yeah, the angels. (laughs) Look at this extremely sad, hurt puppy. Yeah. You should donate money. Don't adopt a puppy. Donate money to us. Don't Don't adopt a puppy. If you don't support us, we'll kill this kitten in front of you. <laughs> hey, you watching. If you don't support us, we're going to kill this cat right now. <laughs> oh, I hear the phone ringing. Deborah, are you going to donate any money? That's not enough money, Deborah. We need $25, Deborah. You only uh, have 23 oh, you, answered, you answered more. <laughs> we need 50 We're going to play Russian roulette with this kitty cat. <laughs> Anyways, that's super manipulative. That's actually what Pete... Actually, Pete kills all animals. That's the tr- only way to truly be free. It's true. Death is the only escape. PETA. <laughs> there's a, there's uh, another video that talks about all the ridiculous things PETA has done. That's oh, phenomenal. That's what I need to look up. So if you don't eat them, they will. Exactly. Wait, what? <laughs> Anyways, so you want to be a journalist. What, why do you want to be... What, why do you kind of want to be a lawyer? I like arguing. <laughs> okay, so that that kind of makes sense, but also that's it. I mean, you've known me for a long time. I part of it is politically based, but I I try and keep a lot of my content free of politics. Yeah, because it it's in everything already. I don't people don't need to hear my views or anything like that. But hey, look, everybody, another white twenty something male who has an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just I don't like the world the way it is. I never have really been a fan of politicians or anything so no, nobody is nobody I, should be i want to fight those people exactly with words of course oh okay <laughs> dang it <laughs> the nsa is now listening exactly you are now on the list oh we've been on lists for, we've all we, we've James been, and I are on, we've multiple been lists. on multiple lists you looking up so uh who works who does the dentistry for the queen yes <laughs> that's actually quite interesting it is fascinating <laughs> but also you're definitely on a list yeah who puts their hands in the queen's mouth all right, I'm all out of questions. Was there anything you want? Was there anything you wanted to bring to us that you wanted to talk about specifically? Um, Is there any questions you want to ask us? If you throw that in the hole, I'm going to beat you with a stick. <laughs> I'm really tempted now. I'll find a stick and beat you with it. Go, go, go! Ow! <laughs> what was that? It hit my earbud. <laughs> And it threw off my equilibrium. <laughs> Anyways, are will there any we questions? ever get Morning Eggnog the movie? No, probably not for the next at least. That actually, yes, it is going to be released late. Um, twenty fifty. Twenty. No, we got to push it back. Twenty fifty two. Twenty fifty one. We're going early. Uh, early release. We're going to talk logistics because my my uh, my line was twenty fifty two. Well, I might be dead by twenty fifty two. Same. Anyways, wait, 30 years? That put me at 60. Yeah, you're going to be dead then? Actually, I hope I'm dead then. But anyways, you're going to be dead then? Yeah. 
It's going to be interesting what happens to America by that time. Yeah, I'll be fine. It'll be Anyways. pretty pog. It'll be pretty pog. Anyways, so no, 2052. That's, that's the answer. We'll go with nice. that. Nice. But we're doing a Lego version. Exactly. Any other questions? Do you have any questions for J-Man? Not really. I'm just super tired. So your tiredness outweighs your need to question me? Yes. Yes, at this point in time, yes. All right, here's a very serious question. How long do you expect to keep the mustache? <laughs> um, until I find Sorry, a woman. Sorry, I, miss, I misspoke. How long do you expect to keep the dirty caterpillar that's living on the top of your lip? Go to hell, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, until I find a suitable la- mate, ladies, or Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> so w- that doesn't make any... So why would you have a deterrent on your face to make women run away from you to catch women? Well, it's only a deterrent for you, which means it's working. I mean, I guess. Mm. I think so, he's using, so he answered the same question, 2052. I think he's using the <laughs> Nate Cox approach. <laughs> the Wait, Nate what? Co- Nate Cox. Uh, Nate Cox was an individual who would annoy you to see if you could actually become his Nate friend. Nate Cox. Ah, yes. The Nate Cox, that, is, that did work on me, kind of. Yeah. He, what he would do is he would act like he doesn't like you or he was uninterested. And so you would actually have to try to become his friend. It was like a cat. He's, Nate Cox is a cat. Yes. And so if you show too much interest or if you hate cats, he, he'll, he'll love you. He'll give you a hug, a bone-breaking hug. Um, uh, Nate, Nate Cox will just rip, break all of your ribs. I am still recovering. That was 2016. So he was a head shorter than me and could throw me around like a rag doll. He's much, it's weird. Have you seen a picture of him recently? Yes, he's buff. It's weird. Hi, Nate. I hope you're watching. Love you. But uh, yeah, so you're annoying women till they like you. I got it. Or they have to, they have to show interest in you first. It's kind of like if you drive a really crappy car, but you really have a Ferrari hidden in the garage. There we go. It's like that. So that's, so that's his, so his There's a Ferrari his Ford, hiding uh, behind his mustache? That, no, that's his Prius. <laughs> oh. That mustache. It's good. Now we shall now name it the Prius. The hey, Prius. It's eco friendly. It's eco friendly. Oh. <laughs> it runs on vegetable oil. oil. Ooh, uh, uh, I don't want to yeah. think about all the oil in your mustache. <laughs> I think you do, James. No, I don't. Anyways, let's Where right. we? Let's oh, right. no, we're getting off the rails. Yep, we're fast. getting off the rails. So it's time to end the podcast. <laughs> uh, again, Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Jonathan Nest, a.k.a. The Amazing J-Man, a.k.a. Just J-Man. Yes. Uh, if you want to play Rainbow Six with us, uh, don't, because we don't like you. Um, <laughs> but be sure to check him out on Instagram and on uh, The Amazing J-Man and to check him out on Anchor. Are you just on Anchor or are you on Spotify too? So J-Man's Cantina is on every platform where podcasts can be heard. Wow, that sounds like a line from the Anchor Handbook. But anyways, go check it out uh, on Anchor or wherever podcasts are heard. Uh, J Man's Cantina. Uh, is that that's is it is J Man one word? Yes. Okay, because I think I looked it up as J Dash Man and it did not come up. So that was why I wanted to clarify that. Uh, you can find us, Caleb and I, on morningeggnog at gmail and email us a background you want us to put up. If you want to be on the podcast or if you have a topic you want us to cover, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and see updates that are coming on if I ever post again. Um, and you can message us on there if you have, as I said, any questions or not. If you rate us five stars on iTunes and leave a review, you can't just leave right. Anyways, and then you have to like email or message me proof. I will PayPal you a dollar. No cap, as they say. He's desperate. I'm desperate. Please leave me five stars. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us, and be sure to have a wonderful morning, noon, or night. See ya. Thank you.